podrši albanskom separatizmu i terorizmu na Kosovu i Metohiji, posebno se angažovala albanska emigracija u zemljama zapadne Evrope i SAD. U Americi je 86. godine još osnovano albansko američka civilna liga pod predsjedništvom uticajnog kongresmena Josefa Diogardija, čiji je zadatak bio da aktivno lobira na Capitol Hillu za zahteve i ciljeve kosovskih albanaca. Aktivnim lobiranjem Liga je otvorila put kosovsko-metohijskim separatistima za zvanične kontakte u američkom senatu i kongresu. U svakom slučaju, albansko-američka civilna Liga je u mnogome doprinela sistematskom širenju antisrpskog raspoloženja i satanizaciji srpskog naroda u američkoj javnosti. Hello, I'm former Congressman Jody Aguardi, the president of the Albanian American Civic League. You have just heard former Serbian dictator and indicted war criminal Slobodan Milosevic misrepresent our important work in Washington to free Kosovo and all Albanians from the tyranny of his regime. We have Mr. to go Aguardi, you made is, some very yeah. inflammatory statements here. I did, here. because Mr. Milosevic has been very inflammatory some, against and, and, the Albanians, and someone has to speak up against them, and thank God we have the Congress of the United States to stand up for oppressed people, well, including the Kosovo. Yes, but Mr. Aguardi, you need to be accurate when you're a witness, especially when you're a lobbyist for a group. I'm an ethnic now, Albanian. you have to be I'm accurate. I'm an ethnic Albanian. I'm an ethnic Albanian. I'm the president of the Albanian American Civic League and the Albanian American Foundation, and I resent those intonations. I don't question Congresswoman Bentley's motives. She's proud of her ethnic background the way I'm proud of mine. And I applaud her that she could stand up for them the way I stand up for our Albanians. And I want to see freedom-loving people everywhere treated the way they're supposed to be treated. Emri i Gjosef të oguardit në Amerika si lidur në gusht me luftën e ti që e kësekullore për ardmërin e fatin e kombit shqiptar në mi vjeqarin e ri. As një individ shqiptar nga diaspora Amerikës, pas luftës e dytë botrore e kohës e nolit e konicës, nuk a bërë më shumë se sa zotit të oguardi për qështje në komtare shqiptare. A i, bashkë me bashortën e ti, zonjën shëri kloës të oguardi, dha një kontributi a zakonshëm për të drejtat komptare të shqiptarve në Balkan, dhe si pas një anketet të gjërë të televizionit të shqiptarve të Amerikës, u përzjodh për dhënjen e titullit Thank You në ermër të shikuesve të televizionit të diasporës shqiptare. Por kush është Gjozef të oguardi? A e lindi në Bronx të New Yorkut nga një baba arbresht dhe një nën italiane. Baba i ti erdh në Amerik në një fshat arbresht italis i banuar me shqiptar të shpëngullur nga Shqipëria. Në feminin e ti, si një emigran, e kuptoj se ti qka të ka i dhe familja ti ishte ndryshe nga italianet dhe tjera. A e ndje u kushtrimin e gjaku të ti të shprishur dhe u shëndrua në një misionarët të qështjes shqiptare. Shtu, në nëntorë të vitit 1984, shqiptarë Amerikani Gjosef Diogwardi, antari partijës republikane, u zhjodh antari Kongresit Amerikan një distrikt të shtetit të New Yorkut, duke nisur kështu karierën politike në shërbim të Amerikës dhe të qështjes komptare shqiptare në Balkan. Në atë ko, vetëm gati 12 kongresmen kujton e i, nga 435 dinin të qkambi situatën në Kosovë dhe se shumica e Kosovës ishte shqiptare. Por që mandati i dytë si antari Kongresit Amerikan që i dhatë dio guardit dhe qështje se Kosovës një shtysë të madhe për të edukuar median Amerikane për më shumë bështetje në Kongresit dhe Senat për shkandothe me të vërtet me shqiptare të Balkanit në një Koslavi e në veçanti në Kosovën martire. Me dio guardje në antartë Kongresit Amerikan, fillon një etape re e historisë e shqiptarve të Amerikës për të sensibilizuar qeverin dhe legislativin Amerikan, për të prezentuar, përfajsuar, në timuar, për zgjidhën e qështjes komptare të shqiptarve në Balkan. E si pikënisje, shërbeu një fest familjare e celebrimit të 25 vjetorit të lindjes të ti, kur komuniteti shqiptar i New Yorkut, kresisht nga Kosova që e mbështetën zjedhen e ti në kongres i kërkoj të loponte për Kosovën. 
e dio guardi me aksionin e ti prej adetare shqiptarit të madh. Krioj një apsir miqësie për të gjithë shqiptarët si kom me kombin Amerikan. A i kontaktoj presidentet Amerikan me lider shtetesh në Amerikan në pot, promovoj liderët shqiptarët Kosovës të malit të zhjit Luginës u Preshevës të Makedonis në shtetin Amerikan në Kongres dhe në Senat si dhe veprimtarët e qështjes qame. A i realizoj dhjetra rezoluta për qështjen komtare shqiptare e në veçanti për Kosovën në bashkëpunim me antartë senatit e Kongresit Amerikan që lobuan krakti, promovoj u që kënë si një ushtri që lërimtare, realizoj dhjetra protesta pajësore para se live më në zëtë botës në Amerike në Evropë dhe shumë veprimtarinë e dobitë e shqiptarve. Vëshgoj nga afer e dokumentoj barbarin dhe pasohet e regjimit militar sërbë në Kosovë duke bërë më të letë vendimin Amerikan për t'i ardhë në ndim shqiptarve të Kosovës. Vetëm me Kosovën shtetë pavarë do t'ketë pache në Balkan. Kjo ishte motua e punës të ti dhe Kosova u bëhe pavarë. Falë edhe pa thyë e shmëris, gudzimit, vendosë mëris për të bërë diçka për qështjen komptare shqiptare nga Gjozef Dio Guardi. Dhe puna e ti për qështjen komptare shqiptare vazhton. Antarësimi Shqipëris dhe Kosovës në BE, antarësimi Kosovës dhe NATO, zgjidhja e qërshës dhe qamëris dhe konsolidimi i të drejtave të Shqiptarve në Makedoni, Preshev dhe Maltëzi, janë linjat e punës në vijin në të ardhme. Shqiptarët e Amerikës kanë fatin e matë të kenë me styre Gjozef Dio Guardin këtë figur komptare që me vullnetarizmin e ti e bëri qërshën komptare Shqiptare më të dëgjuar në Amerikë dhe në jetën politike Amerikane dhe në botë dhe lidhjen qytetare shqiptaro-amerikane një organizat të pavarur me vlera komptare për të mjërën e kombit shqiptar. Qërshtja shqiptare ende nuk është në bëllu, dhe tani, 7-5 vjeqar, a i ende nuk delë në pension deri sa jo të zgjidhe. Ndaj dhe televizioni shqiptarve të Amerikës uron, u bësh një qënë vjetë gjo, dhe thank you. Që ku është nëruar televizorit qiptarit të Amerikës, pra keni ndjekur një spot që është kushtuar zotit Gjozef Dë Guardi, ish kongresmen të kongresin Amerikan, por ajo që ka rëndësi është fitusi i qmimit të thank you. Kjo është i fëllim të emisioni që ku është nëruar, unë e themë se Gjozef Dë Guardi pra rënditet në basë nolit dhe konicës për aktivitetin e ti të madhë qiptar që ka bërë për gjitha treva qiptare dhe veçanrisht të përgjështë për Kosovën. Do të kemi rasin gjatë bisedes me të që ne vetë mësojmë këto. Mr. Gjozef Dio Guardi, thank you very much for coming here. Well, thank you for taking the time and doing something so creative as getting the people to vote. This is like a popular referendum, which is very important in America to hear from the people what they think. And I'm proud that people would remember the work that I did as a congressman and then later as a citizen to make sure that my father's history, an Albanian born in Italy. Të gjithë shqiptarët e dinë se kush është Gjozef Dugardi, por ishte mirë si kur të dinim atë originën më mirë për familjen tuaj. Well, you know, America is a great country and many people come here for opportunity to find work. My father came in 1929, right when the worst depression was in America. He was only 15 years. Why did he come? Because they were starving. In his Kutundi Greci, the, even the food you couldn't find. And he told me he had uh, female cousins, Pugina, that they had to send to the convent in the church because they could not feed the big families. So he comes to America, but, you know, Albanian people are very disciplined. They had a farm in Greci. They made wine. They made cheese. They even grew very vegetables, nuts, and they brought it down once a week to sell to the Italian people. They had the very high mountain. They would come down once a week, my father said, with the donkey, and they would have the market, and they would sell what they made. So my father worked very hard because my grandmother was very tough, uh, and uh, he learned a lot. When he came to America, he was very clever. 19, 1929, and he 
came to one of the poorest places in New York, Harlem, where the black people were. And that's where he was living in the beginning. But he saw that they liked collard greens, mustard greens, kale, all the vegetables. And from the farming experience, he said, maybe I have to do this. And he found where the farmer's market was to buy. And he brought it, put it on the street, and he's selling 1930, 1931. By 1934, he had his own store. He's only 21, 22, nice dress, like a nice suit. And my mother met him in 1935. She was from Italy, Bari, on the east coast of Italy. Dad was from near Naples, Catundi Grecci is an Albanian-speaking village near Naples, on the west coast of Italy. And they came and worked together. But first, he met her here. He met her not in Italy, in America. And my mother said that he had his own car. He was the only one in the Bronx with a radio in the car, 1935. And he, um, he was dressed very well. So he learned very fast that if you work hard, then you can do things for yourself and your family. So my family in the Bronx was not poor, but lower middle class. We all had to work. And when I was born in 1940, Dad had a, like a market, a food market, vegetables, groceries, meat. Now, Mom and Dad worked together. 1948, 49, I'm only eight, nine years old, but already I'm delivering the orders. I'm working with Mom and Dad. They taught me young how to be productive. That was a good word for my father, produce. He said, Joe, if you don't produce, your boss cannot pay you. If you produce, then you can make more money. So I'm proud that my family came here with no education and no money, but they were able to see America gives you the opportunity, no matter who you are, if you, my father used to say, you have to think big and work hard. Thank you. Pas të fillojmë nga politika, ju keni kaluar dhe fëmërin. Ju folit pak, po me ndojtë flasim akoma për fëmërin të uaj. Pas e kemi par disa filma të cilët flasin ato po më mire shkur flisin juve. We lived in the Bronx, and we lived with my mm -hmm. father's family, and they were from Greci. My uh, grandmother lived on the same floor in the apartment building that I, I was in, and I had opportunity when I was younger to speak to her in Albania, uh, Albanian. If, if I was to come from school, maybe I'm now, uh, let's see, 11, 12, she was home and she would ask me, <laughs> so I'm learning, I, I was learning the Albanian language from my, my grandmother. And many times when I walked into their apartment, my grandmother would speak to my aunt in Albanian and they knew, I knew some Italian more than Albanian, so they would say in Albanian when I came in, because I was always listening, uh, <laughs> don't say anything like I was there. So we did speak Albanian, but when we moved to Westchester, we didn't speak with my Albanian family anymore. So I don't know how to speak fluently Albanian, but I, I understand the words, you know, uh, hunda, lesh. Uh, you know, Greek. So I, I understand these words. I'm very proud that my family had this subculture from our brush, the Italian people, because in my neighborhood was Italian Americans. And, and when I was small, I thought maybe my father was talking a dialect of Italian. I didn't know it was a separate language. I, I began to suspect it was, but when I got to Congress, and they found my father speaking Albanian, some Albanians from Yugoslavia, that's when I said, oh my God, here's my father speaking to people from Yugoslavia, not from Italy, not from America. It's, it's a different language. So I had this unusual upbringing. So I remember that, and I remember working from when I was maybe uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 1949, 1950, 51, uh, with the orders, delivering the orders, then behind the counter, uh, taking the money for the food, and then putting the groceries on the shelf. So I had my responsibilities. And it was important for me later on, because when you have this kind of training, when you are young, you build your confidence. 
when you see different kinds of people in a store, uh, black, white, Jewish, uh, Italian, it, it makes you comfortable with all kinds of people. And this later on was a big benefit to me when I ran for Congress because I had to greet all kinds of people and I was very comfortable doing that. As I do guardi, uh, you can hear two on bronze. Na periudh ka pasur edhe probleme kriminale, um, mund nasil një pak atë jetën si e kujtoni ju e bronzi në ato vite? Yes, I do, and it's a good question because my mother knew that the neighborhood was not so good because we had mafia people in the neighborhood. And we had gangs, young people that wanted to become like mafia. So when I was eight years old, I had to go take the accordion lessons. You know, when you're Italian, they, they like the accordion. My, my grandfather's, uh, my mother's side, they always liked the accordion, and my father did too. So that kept me off the streets. So I, and then they gave me a good education in the Catholic schools. When you have the nuns in the Catholic schools, you have a lot of homework. So when I came home from school, I went to the store for maybe one or two hours, then I came home to practice the accordion, then I had to do my homework, there was no time to get in trouble with any bad uh, criminals. So my parents were very smart to keep me busy. Very good education. Uh, I was the first in my family to go to high school. My mother had eighth grade education here. My father had fourth grade education in Italy. But I'm the first to go to high school and then to college. And I had good education in a very tough school, the Jesuits for eight years, the high school, and then Fordham University, Fordham Prep, Fordham University. In fact, this year, I'm going to be put in the Hall of Honor with the Jesuits at Fordham on November the 20th, and I'm going to have many Albanians there too. So this was a good thing. Now, you know, the Pope is a Jesuit, first one in history. Uh, Jesuits take 13 years before they become a priest. Very difficult. You need two PhDs, and they are intellectuals the best. I learned a lot in that school, so I'm very happy to have a good education. Zodi Dugardi, në qëtë thana kini hyrë në politikë, e përqenit politikën apo kini hyrë rasisht? I decided to do something in politics when I was successful in business. I spent 22 years as a certified public accountant. I am the first accountant, first CPA, certified public accountant, to be elected to the U.S. Congress, House or Senate, in history. Mm -hmm. And I went from 1962 to 1984 in the world's largest accounting firm at that time. So I have very good training as an accountant, business. But when I was 44, I said to myself, I need to do something more important with my life. I was very active in the community. I was working on many charitable things. Uh, I brought a lot of business to my firm because I was in the community giving speeches. And people used to say, you know, you have the personality, you should run for mayor, you should run for the city council. And then one day, the big businessmen in Westchester County, one of them said to me, we have this congressman, but he's not good for us. Maybe you should run. It took two years for me to think about that. And I said, you know, I'm going to leave this firm, but I'm going to leave with the idea that I want to do something very important, big, to run for the U.S. Congress. Some people laughed. You're an accountant. How can you run for Congress? You're not involved in politics. But you see, my optimism from my parents and my confidence is you could do anything you want to do if you work hard and if you use your mind and you're clever like George Castriotti. He was very clever. He beat the army at 250,000 with only 10,000. And I did it and people said, when they met me, you know, you seem to know a lot about different kinds of people. And little by little, when I brought my parents on both arms, immigrants from Italy, people were liking me. They used to ask, well, some people would say, what is your party? I said, I'm not going to tell you my party. Why do you want to know my party? Know about me. Know my family. Look what I accomplished in business, and here's what I want to do for you. So the party is not important. 
And I won in a very difficult election on November 1984. And I became a congressman January 1985. Yeah. They, they know that I am um, Arbresh. And uh, we had a wonderful celebration in Michigan, as you know, uh, with Marsh Natsulai and the community. And the Civic League has a chapter here with Marsh Natsulai and Zef. And, and I think one song I would put is the Arbresh song, Lule Lule, the, the flowers. Uh -huh. I think it's a beautiful song. First? First. The second song I would pick is the song that came from Shkurta Feza when I brought Tom Lantos to meet Rogova and to challenge Milosevic at the Grand Hotel in May of 1990. And I said, when they opened the window, thousands of Albanians came to see me. And I said, Moski frika se ke gente namarik, the words of Fanoli. And Skruta Feza made that into a song. Moski frika se ke gente namarik. So I would like that song for Kosovo. And I think um, for America, I think there's a beautiful song, uh, Oh Beautiful for Spacious Guys, America the Beautiful. <laughs>